videos got me sweating. <laughs> <sighs> Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Today's gonna be a little bit of a different video. Today, as you can tell from the title, I'm gonna be answering and telling stories about things that I get questions about a lot. I'm gonna be very truthful and very honest in this video, but I do definitely think that it's needed. I absolutely love my job. I couldn't see myself doing anything else, but as great and amazing as the perks are, there are also some downsides. Um, and I get a lot of really intense questions a lot and I think it's time that I talk about them. <laughs> if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe before you leave and hit the notification bell so you can become part of the Birch family. If you're watching this video and you work in veterinary medicine, whether you're a veterinary technician, an assistant, a nurse, a veterinarian, I tag you to make a similar video or even post to Instagram with the hashtag tough stuff and also hashtag Birch family. But let's go ahead and get started. This video was not easy to make. So number one is a question that I get a lot. It's what procedure bothers you the most? Uh, honestly, bloody procedures don't really bother me that much, but the procedure that bothers me the most are decapitations. Patients that are showing signs and symptoms of rabies and they have to be euthanized, you do have to decapitate them and send the entire head off to the lab for them to test for rabies. It really bothers me. Um, I understand why the procedure is necessary and I don't have any issues with like the procedure itself. I just, I don't like to watch it because I just like picture my own animals and I, I just don't like it. I don't like it. That's really the only thing that bothers me. I've been practicing for about seven years now and I think I've only seen three or four. So, I mean, it doesn't happen that often, but when it does, I just, <laughs> ugh. yeah. What is one thing you could change about veterinary medicine? <sighs> Okay, well, there's three actually that come to mind. I think number one, that I think it should be required to have an educated staff. Not only will that make everyone's job easier, but it makes your staff understand why procedures are being done the way they're done. Companies and brands and drug reps, they always offer like continuing education and different ways to like get your staff involved. And I think that is really important. And unfortunately, not every clinic takes advantage of those opportunities. I think it should be required that if you get hired into a veterinary clinic or you're working under a veterinarian or a veterinary nurse that they give you the opportunity to further your education and they want you to learn and they want you to be better and knowledgeable. But it's also going to build your confidence when you're talking to clients and dealing with patients. I just definitely think that it's something that should be required and not just optional. Number two that I have written down is that clinics should get more involved with practicing fear-free medicine. For those of you that don't know what fear-free is, their mission statement is to prevent and alleviate fear, anxiety, and stress in pets by inspiring and educating the people who care for them. Um, I'll leave the Fear Free uh, website and everything down below. I am Fear Free certified and I made a whole video about that that I'll have down below too if you want to check it out. The program just teaches you to look through the eyes of like your patients and how to handle them when they're scared or nervous or they hate coming to the vet and like maybe your pet hates getting the nail trim and they take him to the treatment area and they like physically hold him down like eight people on top of him while your dog is screaming and urinating on himself and pooping everywhere just teaches you how to take that situation and go at it a different way whether that's like coming in for happy visits or maybe even giving your pet like a mild sedative so it takes the edge off and they're not so stressed out but I've worked in a lot of places to where they think physically holding an animal down even though it's suffering is okay and I, I don't think that's okay I think there are other ways that you can go about a situation that's best for you and your patient and also the client but if you don't educate yourself about that sort of thing then you don't really know how to handle them my third thing is unfortunately I don't know why this is but every clinic I've ever worked at there's always been like drama there always seems to be just like drama in veterinary medicine and I just I would just get rid of it all together you know I just think as co-workers you should focus more on building each other up instead of trying to tear one another apart every person no matter what it is is working in a clinic because they care for the well-being of their patients or they should if they don't you you shouldn't be working in a clinic at all. And y'all are all there for the same common goal. So you should always treat everyone respectfully and everyone has a specific skill that they bring to the clinic. I don't know, I'm just one of those people that see the good in everybody. So it really hurts my heart. So, oh my gosh. Anyway, moving on. I'm nervous to read the next one. What is the most valuable lesson that you've learned? I don't know if you would necessarily call it a lesson, but I always have to remember that tomorrow is a new day filled with new patients. So whatever happened at the clinic that day, whether it was with 
coworkers, whether it was with a patient that passed away that y'all have been like working really hard to get better and it just didn't work out, you can't carry that on into the next day because it's gonna affect the patients of that day. I always make a point to be very happy and bubbly every single day and I try my best not to carry things that happened yesterday into my tomorrows. But always remember that tomorrow is a new day. You can do anything as long as you have the right attitude. Sorry it got so dark, it's literally about to storm. If y'all didn't know, I control the weather with my emotions, so that's why it's about to rain. <laughs> Are you scared to put your own pets under anesthesia? Not scared. Um, anesthesia, whether it's my own pet or not, I think anesthesia should always be taken very seriously. Anesthesia actually is very, very safe with the newest types of anesthesia. And honestly, if complications are to occur, it's not while your pet is under anesthesia, it's actually while they're waking up if you'll have complications. And I actually read an article, which I'll have linked down below, but it said the average death rate under anesthesia is around 0.2%. With that being said, an average of 99.8% of pets, regardless of their age, health issues, do survive anesthesia. Okay, next question is, what is the worst thing you've ever seen while working at a veterinary clinic? Oh, we had a very, very good client who had gotten this brand new puppy. It was the cutest basset hound puppy I have ever seen. You know, we saw him for all his vaccines. We saw him and we neutered him and he was so cute. Around when he was six months old, I believe, I was back in the our treatment area and all I hear are our front doors slam open in this lady. And she came in screaming like, oh my God, oh my God, like my dog, my dog, my dog. And she had blood just like from head to toe. Like she was covered in blood. I remember running out our side door to her car to find the cute little six month old Basset Hound puppy. He was just completely bloody and I picked him up and I ran him into our treatment area and his head was just completely smashed. And when I brought him inside, she just laid over him and was crying and just screaming. She's like, please save him, like save him, do something, save him. And there was nothing that could be done. He had already been gone for a while. And honestly, it was just so heartbreaking. What happened was I think her son was out in their garage like working out and the puppy was out there with him and when he was lifting weights, the weights fell off the side onto the dog's head. So he was instantly gone. I think just the shock of losing a pet so unexpectedly and suddenly is just heartbreaking, especially for clients that just truly love their animals. Okay, I can't do this right now. I need to get through this video. <laughs> Oh my gosh, final question. I never thought I would get to the end. Is, have you ever worked for a bad doctor? I don't think I've ever worked for a bad doctor. I think I've worked for doctors that we didn't believe the same things or we didn't see eye to eye. You know, and in that situation, if you see that you're working for someone that y'all don't share the same goals or y'all don't believe in the same things, then you should definitely go work for someone else. I think it's very important that a veterinarian and their staff see eye to eye and have the same common goal and that everyone is on the same page as to what they want in a practice. <gasps> Man, this was tough. This was really hard. All right, guys, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.